joining me for episode 24 of My Doll's House Diary. Now I've got a really quick episode for you today just to update you on a few little bits and pieces I've done in the kitchen since the last episode and I also want to show you a really easy way to make 1 12th scale tea bags. So let me show you what I've been up to. I just want to start by showing you what I've added to the kitchen since you were last here. And the first thing I've done is dress the little table there in the corner. So I've just stood a pot of tulips on top of a couple of gardening books. I've got a little marmalade pot there with some candles in. A little tiny box of matches on the corner of the table there. And then underneath I've added a bag of coal and a couple of little stacks of kindling. And I used matchsticks for the kindling, but cut them to length and also cut them lengthwise so that you make them a lot thinner. A matchstick would be too thick, so get them as thin as you can. And then I just tied a little bit of string around them. And then I've um, just tucked a little apple crate alongside the table there just to fill out that space. And I've got a walking stick in the corner, ready for the walks across the countryside with the dog. And then a little purchase I was really pleased with was this little metal shovel here, little coal shovel. And I'm going to order some of these to sell in my Etsy shop. So if you like the look of that, look out for those. They'll be in the metal miniatures section. And I've just stood that there for now. Really pleased with that. I added a couple of chopping boards to the back of the Arga there. And a little pot of utensils. I've actually glued the kettle into place and glued that hot plate lid open glued it against the chimney flue there and then put a couple of little tea towels on the front of the Arga. I think that looks really nice. Might have some baked goodies standing on that closed lid eventually. Now these lovely cockerel pictures were sent to me by a lady called Julie when I was actually working on the Creating Kitchens book and she sent me these for the farmhouse kitchen. Now, as that was just a temporary room box just for the photographs and has since been dismantled, I wanted to put them in a more permanent home. So I've stuck those to the wall there and I think they just suit this room perfectly. Another lovely little gift is that um, squirrel you see sitting on the window ledge there from a lady named Michelle. And that came all the way from the name convention in the United States, the NAME convention there and again she sent me that for the craft room window ledge but I really wanted to put that somewhere where I'll see it more often so I thought the kitchen window ledge was the perfect home for her. Now I've taken everything off of the sink because I want to do a bit of a more permanent display on there so I'll take that into my workshop in a moment. I've also done a little display here on the kitchen island and this little cheese board here I won in a competition it must have been about five years ago and it was on Facebook and all you had to do was pop over and like Doll's House and Miniature Scenes Facebook page and then you were entered into a competition to win this little cheese board which was made by Sadie at Homewood Flight and I've had that stored away carefully for all of those years I wanted to use it in my doll's house, so that will sit on there. And they're just glued, they're just um, stuck into place with tacky wax at the moment. I've added a couple of serviettes there with some cutlery, and that cutlery is part of the Kreisenbon range. And they do a range of plastic miniatures, but they don't look plastic, and they're all really good quality and true to scale. So I really like the Kreisenbon range. also added a couple of tea towels to the kitchen island there and this is the kitchen dresser that I told you about in the last Doll's House Diary. I changed my mind on the little desk and chair for that corner. So I added the little hook rail to the end of the sink unit there along with an old cloth that I've just glued on there and the little brush that we made 
in the last Doll's House diary. And then I've glued a few of these things on here as well, but I will be adding that vegetable basket here, and then I can stick that a bit closer to the front. I want to get some nice crockery to put in there. And then that's in that sort of corner where I want to treat myself to a Stokesy Ware bread crock, which will stand there. So lots more to do on there, but I just wanted to make a start gluing some of those pieces into place so it doesn't all keep moving about whenever I'm in the doll's house kitchen. So I'll go and pop that back. I've also attached the miniatures along the sideboard here. So I've got a space here which I've left for the pasta jars. But I think I'll probably have them staggered like that so I can also get um, a kitchen roll hold on a holder in there. So I'll also make one of those. And then I, I knew I had some of these somewhere. Some of these um, real stone flagstones and they're actually for flooring. But I've used them in the past for breadboards and cheese boards and things like that. And I knew I had some but I couldn't find them for ages and then I tidied out my unit underneath my doll's house a couple of weekends ago and I found them, I found a little bag of five and I've cut one of them in half exactly in half like that so they're an inch and a half wide now by an inch tall and I'm going to use one for a um, breadboard which will go over there and then I'll have one over here as a worktop saver and then to cut them you obviously make the measurement and then score along the line using a flathead screwdriver on both sides of the piece of stone and then just very carefully along the edge of your desk you can then just crack that and it cracks nice and straight but you can also then sand along the cut there and then when you're positioning that you'd put the cut towards the back like that. So I want to make a cut loaf of bread to go on there and we'll use polymer clay for that and I'm using one of the metal miniature knives that we painted if you remember in one of the earlier tutorials so that will go on there and then on here I'm going to have a couple of coffee mugs ready and a little spoon and then what I've actually got in my real kitchen at home is a little glass jar with my um, peppermint tea bags in. So we'll also make some tea bags and we'll have that on there as well. And maybe we'll do, I don't know, a little plate of biscuits or something or a, um, a packet of biscuits anyway to go on there or some chocolates. Oh, actually, just had a thought. I actually forgot I had these, a little packet of after eight mints so they can go on there as well just reposition it slightly and I'll be gluing all these down a little spoon on there Oops. and they can then go there and then just by having that there and we've got the cheese board ready on the kitchen island it looks like there's perhaps a little dinner party going on in the house so you're creating a little story with all of these little miniatures which is what I love so a little bit more still to do there but I'm really pleased with how it's all looking I do enjoy this part I'm sure you do as well so we'll get I really want to get onto um, doing the food cupboard and as we do the food cupboard we'll also do these little pasta jars at the same time and I think the bread will probably be a separate um, tutorial but we'll see, we'll see how we go. But to make the tea bags I'm actually using a real tea bag. Let me just pop those out of the way. So you want to begin by cutting along the top of the tea bag. Like that, and then getting rid of the tea leaves. Now it's a good idea to put those into another little container because then you can save those for things like earth in plants and other projects. And then cut along each of the joins. Now we just want to use one half of that. So put those to one side. 
Now if you reduce a tea bag to 12th scale it will be 6.5 millimetres by 5 millimetres. Well I just want to round that down a little bit just to make them a little bit smaller to make sure that they don't look too large inside my jar but you can do them the correct measurements if you want to. So just begin by doing one measurement across the top of your uh, tea bag there. And I certainly won't need all of this for that jar. Make the little marks along the bottom edge as well. I'm just going up in six millimeter increments here. And then turn that and join those up. Just go down to there because I'm not going to need all of that like I say. And then you can go across and do your shorter measurement and I'm using the 5mm measurement or 13 64ths of an inch just go to there and the same along there join those up as well so cut off along a strip there like that and I'm just going to cut that off for now and put the rest to one side and you might just want to weigh it down as well just because it's so light you might find it just flies away and I'm also just going to cut off two of the little squares just enough to make one tea bag for now I'll weigh that down with my cocktail sticks as well and then you'll need a black pen and you could use, I've got a fine tipped pen here a V-ball pen and it's a 0.5 but you could use a felt tip pen if you have one of those and you'll also need a pair of fine tipped tweezers so take one of the little squares and just hold on to a corner and we're actually just going to dot in a little square in the middle just leaving a very thin border or narrow border around the outside edge and you don't have to be super neat with it but I find that just by dotting in the square it doesn't just look like you've done a solid square in the middle it's going to look more like tea leaves than just a you know a black solid thick square so this will look more realistic it doesn't take long once you start dotting but do just leave that thin border because if you just do a little square in the middle again that doesn't look look right either dispense your glue onto your card and you just really need a tiny amount and I'm using my Gorilla Glue it works fine for things like this but you could use any sort of tacky glue or PVA <laughs> see as I said PVA the little tea bag shot across the desk and then you just want to apply glue around the outside edge just dot it around the little border you've left and you can lay your other little square on top Just move the bottom square from your sheet otherwise it might just stick where you've just applied the glue and then with your clean cocktail stick press down the seams so you're pressing the glue together you can even just sort of go around with your nail as well just sort of making a little border And you want to do this all quite quickly before the glue dries and it just sticks to your card. And then bring in your tweezers and prise it up, making sure you're getting both sides of the tea bag there. And if there's any paper stuck to your tea bag, then you can just use your scissors to trim that off. And if any of your sides look a little bit fuzzy, then you can 
trim those off as well make it into more of a sharp square be really careful when you're doing that and there's our first little tea bag now I've made these before actually using real tea leaves and apart from getting in a real mess it doesn't really work because the tea leaves automatically want to fly to the outside and stick to your glue and it, you just get into a right old mess with it and you don't have that sort of sharp border around the edge so I find this to be a much better way but of course you can have a play around and experiment yourself and see what you think so I'll probably make, I don't know, half a dozen of these maybe up to ten and put them in my jar and see how they look So I've made 12 tea bags. I think that's just the right amount for my jar. I'm just popping them in there with the tweezers. Put the lid on. There. Little jar of tea bags. So I just wanted to do a little follow up to the food packets tutorial that I did where we looked at copying packets that you have in your own cupboards and I just wanted to say that you don't have to have the actual packet you can just use images that you find online so I'm here in Google images and I've just searched for Tesco's cheese straws and then find an image that you like and then you can just save that, so save image as put in there, cheese straws. And I've actually already done this one, but I'll just go through the process again. And then open that up in your photo editing program. And because you haven't got the packet, you're not going to know the exact size, but just use packets that you have got to work out what sort of size they'd be. And it doesn't matter that it's not exact. So, if we take, for example, a sort of cereal packet box in 12th scale would be about 20 millimetres high, so three quarters of an inch high. Now, I don't think this would be as tall as that, so not quite half. So, let's go for, I don't know, 1.6 centimetres high. And again, we talked about that, this in the last one, so I won't go over all the details again, but I'm saving that at a 300 pixels per inch setting, which gives a nice clear image. And then you just do the same thing again. So you'd open up a new file, and I've done this five centimeters by three centimeters, and the same pixels per inch. And then you just pick up a color on the box. Fill your new file and then you can drag your image onto there and then you would go flatten image so that, that makes that all into one piece and then you can bring that onto a, a new sheet which is A4 size and add several images so that you're not wasting your paper if you just print that image on its own it just comes out in the middle of a sheet so you can't reuse the sheet of paper 
for printing on so it's best to set up a new sheet and pull lots of layers on and you can see here I'm also just working on some tins that I'm also going to put onto backgrounds and print those off as well but for now I've actually already done one whole sheet which I have here and what I want to do today is make up these packets and then actually start gluing them into my cupboard and I have actually got quite a lot of cupboard space to fill in there so I then want to work out how many more packets I'm going to need and also what sort of variety because I want to have lots of different shapes and heights and different types of food which I can then display together in each section. So I'm going to start cutting these out. And again with these because you've only got the image on the front you need to guess how deep the box is going to be. So fold in your front image, again using your ruler, and just go along the sides and the top and bottom, and then turn onto the back of the image, and from that line, do a little line to how wide you want your side to be, or how deep you want the box to be. And I'm just going to go four millimeters there. So do a little line at the top and bottom, and then make sure that you keep that the same on each side rather than just guessing otherwise you won't have a nice square box and then you can fold along that line on each side to make your sides so I'm going to start gluing things in now and I'm actually going to use my Gorilla Wood Glue. Now, the only thing when you're using an image from the internet and it's something that you haven't copied, you're not going to have anything on the sides of your packets, as I did with the Alpen box that I actually photocopied. So just sort of bear that in mind when you're displaying. And although in your own cupboard you'd probably put things in sideways, you can have things facing the front you know, always be thinking of how it's going to look when people are sort of looking in. But this little packet I'm just going to use as a little bit of a brightener in one corner of the cupboard. So I just put a little bit of glue on the bottom there. And I'm actually going to stand that in sideways like that. You'll probably need tweezers to help you um, position things and push things into place. And again, be aware of what angle your cupboard is going to be positioned. And I know that this is going to be at the sort of open side of the doll's house, so people will be looking in from this angle. So I'm going to sort of dress the piece so that, you know, I'm bearing that in mind. I just want to make sure I can close that door with that there. It's hang, overhanging the shelf a tiny bit, so if you think you're overhanging a little bit, then just sort of make sure that your door will close, and then you may just have to twist things a little bit. I'm going to put this little packet next, just so that that way you can then still see the album box behind. So you don't want to cover everything up. I sort of want to stand that slightly sideways like that because we don't all sort of put things back in the cupboard nice and straight do we all the time in fact I'm pretty sure my kitchen cupboard is never nice and straight and neat So just pressing that into place there and then this little Quaker porridge box I'm actually going to face towards the front. Glue on the bottom again. So I can get in there with my fingers with that one. And 
like that and I think you know looking in from that side that's creating quite a nice little display now but I want to add a bit of layering so I'm going to stand that little box of tea in front of the porridge oats there and then I'll carry on along that shelf with the tea and coffee so think about that as well do have it in some sort of order as you would in your own cupboards at home even if everything isn't straight I'm sure you've got sort of sections for different food types you might not you might just you know put everything in the cupboard haphazard so you can obviously do it that way if you want to a bit of glue on the bottom there and that's another thing because the print can sometimes be really small just make sure that you're standing things the right way up I've done that before with some tins just because I, I couldn't read the actual writing on them so always just double check I just want to sort of overlap that one a little bit I might just move it over that way a bit and if you haven't wrapped your labels around wood then just be careful when you're pressing them into place that you don't sort of crush the packet as I just did a little bit with that that T one there then what have we got? Actually, I've got some Horlicks there, which could just stand in there. And then you can still see the Quaker Oats at the back there. So it's all sort of about layering. Have a play around if you don't just want to stick them into place you can sort of just stand stand them in without glue and see how they look that's a good press down because that's a nice piece of down just trying to have a look what other um, I've got another little box of tea there. That was the Earl Grey. And then I've actually got a couple of coffee packets which I haven't made up yet. So I think I'll put this these boxes in place and then I'll leave that shelf. So I've got some nice little um, sort of crackery pieces here so I've got some cheese straws some cream crackers and some um, cheese biscuits there what else have I got that would go with that and we've sort of got pasta and taco shells um, tins I'll have together and I've got some biscuits there as well and also baking supplies I think I'll have these little cracker type things at the bottom here and that one I'm going to stand near the back and then that can tuck in there just because it hasn't got any um, writing on the side so I can sort of hide the side behind the edge of the, the cupboard starting to build up quite nicely and I can see now that I'm going to need quite a few sort of smaller little things that I can stand on top and sort of tuck in the little spaces and things I really do want it to look really full and packed so let's close the doors up and see how that looks I think that looks really good also try and choose lots of different coloured things that's why I was sort of looking for things that had a lot of orange and yellow in them just to sort of add a bit of brightness you can't really see those cars crackers at the back there 
we're a little bit lost but I can find something else to sort of stand stand in there So this side now is all glued into place and I'm pretty happy with how that looks. I'm going to need a few more sort of tea and coffee bits to put on this top shelf here and I want something to tuck on top of the Yorkshire tea box, I'm not quite sure yet, maybe another flatter box of tea bags or something. I need some more tins to go down here, so I've got four in that corner there so I'll do another four tins to fill out that area there and maybe something very small to stand in front of the Jacob's cream crackers down there. I did get a bit carried away and I was gluing things sort of along this front and then when I came to shut the door it wouldn't shut so I had to remove a few bits so as you're sort of gluing things in just make sure you're not coming too far forward if you've got something with closing doors. And then over this side I haven't glued any of these in yet but I want this side to be or this top shelf to be um, sort of biscuits and snacks and things like that and then at the bottom I've just got a little box of icing sugar there but I'll um, do some sort of baking goods along there as well and some other sort of dried food packets and things so I think that that's looking really good I'm going to leave it there for today because I'm going to do have to sort of download lots more images and a lot more folding and things like that but one thing I do want to do before I go, so I just wanted to glue the latest pieces onto the kitchen unit. So I've put the spaghetti and pasta jars into place and I've used tacky wax to secure those. And then I made this little kitchen towel holder, really easy to make. I just cut a circle from a piece of 1.5mm sheet wood, sanded that to round it off. And then I've used a cocktail stick for the holder and I sanded the top of it to round that over and then this is just a little bit of grey card rolled and glued into a cylinder and then just use a piece of tissue to make your kitchen towel and then just sort of leave an end that you can fold over like that and I'm actually just going to glue the roll onto the base and that's just because I, I don't like things moving around if I sort of have to move anything move the furniture or even eventually move the doll's house. I want everything to be secure. So I'll just dot a little bit onto the base there and then glue that down. And I'm going to actually glue it to the top of the unit and so that you can see that little folded over bit. And I think that's quite an interesting subject is whether you sort of glue things permanently into place or not. I'm sure I've spoken about it before. I sort of regard my doll's house as a permanent display, so everything will be glued into place. I don't dress for the holidays or seasons or anything like that, so once I've created a display, that's how it will stay. But obviously, if you do do that, then you'll just want to use tacky wax to secure them. Or, you know, just display pieces loose so that you can easily change your displays and things. I've had, um, you know, when I make the doll's house beds, I actually glue the bed clothes down. And I've had people's comment, you know, well, how do you get dolls in and things? But I don't, I don't use dolls in my displays, but also I don't, you know, intend to change the bed in or anything like that. So that's why I glue it down. I'm just using the end of the tweezers there to press that against the unit. Just holding that in place while it dries. But it'd be interesting to hear actually whether you treat your 
displays as permanent features or whether you like to change things around. You can put a comment in the comment box below if you like. Just get rid of that excess glue. And that's important when you do use tacky wax or glue to secure things. Always get rid of any residue that's showing because in, if you take photographs and things that will always be noticeable and it's a shame because it sort of lets down you know an otherwise more or less realistic display so I quite, quite like how all that's looking now sort of lots of different heights and levels on there to add a bit of interest and then I've got the little let me just move the camera back a little bit I've got the little um, worktop saver here which if you remember was that piece of real real stone slab and I cut the slab in half and I'm going to use one as a breadboard which will go there but I don't want to do anything with that yet I'll go at that end there so I'll just leave that loose but this one I'm actually going to dress with these few pieces so I've got the after eights there that was already in my collection and then I've just made a little box of um, coffee there which I'm going to also put into place and there's the little tea bag jar and I've just used a tiny little bit of tacky wax at the back of the lid there to secure the lid onto the jar. It's not holding too well, still sort of flipping up if I move it, but it will hold it enough that if I sort of move this um, unit again or move the doll's house, then that will stay where it should. So I'm just wondering, I think I probably need to use tacky wax for the cups. Or the coffee mugs. A little bit on the bottom there with a cocktail stick. Press that into place there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of tacky wax in the bottom of this second mug. And I just want to secure the spoon into place. A tiny little um, well, teaspoon, coffee spoon there from Kreisenbon miniatures. I think I mentioned them before as well. They're sort of plastic miniatures and these come on um, one of those little sort of cards and you peel them off and then cut away the little plastic tags. It's that sort of thing. So very much like um, train model sets and things like that. But they're really realistic. I really like the look of them. They have some nice details on. Like this is a sort of beaded um, cutlery set and it's actually got that ridge around the edge of the handle. So that's little cups and then I'll have the after H just on the side there. They can be glued. Always easy to stick card and paper down. And then I'm going to have the little tea bags there and again I've just moved that lid but again I'll need to use tacky wax on the bottom of there because it's glass. And the bit that I've put the little tacky wax inside the lid I want to have it all to the back. That can't be seen. I think that lid's just going to come away on my finger. It's sort of sticking. I don't think it's in danger of falling off, so that should be okay. Oh, no. <laughs> it's because I've got some on the top of the lid. I'll, I'll look at that in a bit. I'll just pop it back on there for now see what I can do with that. Just put my finger in the glue. I'm always doing that. I put my arm in the glue once and then I went off for lunch or something and I realised I had a little paper packet sticking to my elbow. I don't know how long it had been there. So I've angled that um, 
coffee packet as well so that it's more visible when you're looking into the doll's house. Rather than just seeing the side of that, you can actually see the front of the packet. And then I'm actually going to glue this worktop saver into place as well. And I'm actually going to try and use glue on that. Because I'm sticking to one part wood, that should work. A bit on the bottom there. And I just want to position that right in front of that little tea caddy unit. Like that. And that's another thing as well. This, as you can see, this unit's pretty sort of packed, and I really like that. I like to use as many miniatures as I can without it looking sort of overcrowded and those things are there when really there would be no reason for them to be there. But I do like to use a lot of miniatures in my displays. I think it adds a lot of interest, and I like when somebody sort of views your doll's house or your miniature project that there's a lot to look at you know so that they can concentrate on one area for quite a while just having a look at all the all the little bits and pieces make sure that that's straight on there again I'm just going to use those tweezers to give that a firm press Always press on a solid area when you're doing that, so you're not going to squash or break anything. Did I glue that down? Yes, I did. Can't remember if I'd done that or not. So, last thing to do on there then will be that breadboard, and I want to make a nice sliced loaf to go on there. And I will get around to that. I keep putting off the um, polymer clay project simply because it's a an entire day project by the time you've sort of mixed the clays um, and baked all the pieces and then displayed them. It, it's just an entire day out of my week, so I really just need to make sure that I'm on top of everything else before I, I get the polymer clay tins out. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go and put this back in place. And I also just want to try the food cupboard in place as well, just to see how that looks so far. So I'm going to put some just some pieces of masking tape on the back and then I'll just sort of put that in place so we can see how that's looking so far. So that's the sideboard back in place and then I've just attached three strips of masking tape to the back of the cupboard and I'm just going to try that into place. Now this is a really good way of sort of trying things into place before you attach them permanently but don't leave it there for too long because the tape sort of loses its stick after a while, masking tape will, and you'll find that it might fall off the wall. I've done that before and then I've come down in the morning and it's just clattered onto the floor, so do be careful when you're using this method. Now I'm just going to have to move the camera to get that into place. And there's the wall cupboard in place. I really like how that's looking now, it's getting fuller and it's got a bit of colour in it. Let me just bring the kitchen island back in. I think that's starting to look really nice now. So I've still got to dress this little unit over here. I've got some ideas for that. I'm really pleased with that. I love how that side is coming along. Lots of details in there, lots to look at. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and that you're going to have a go at making those 1 12 scale tea bags. Now in the next episode I'm going to be moving up to the bedroom here on the top right and I'm going to make a start on the decorating. I'll also tell you about my plans for the room. And for now thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.